Hello everyone, my name is Meng Yuanli. I'm from the Ohio State University. Today I'm going to present our paper, Cypherlix Breaking Constant Time Cryptographic on AMD SEV where the ciphertext are channeled. This is a joint work with my advisor, Dr. Yin Chen Zhang from Southern University of Science and Technology, Dr. Hui Bo Wang, Dr. Kang Li from Baidu Security, and Dr. Yue Changchen from NIO Security Research. Let's start with some background about AMD Secure Encrypted Virtualization, SEV. So SEV is AMD's new technology since 2016, and it's adopted or will be adopted in all those mainstream cloud service providers. SEV is built at top both traditional virtualization and the hardware memory encryption technology. The goal of SEV is to provide additional protection towards virtual machine VM in cloud. According to SEV's security assumption, it tries to protect SEV-enabled VM even the host is not trusted anymore. Let's look at how SEV achieved this ambition goal. The hardware memory encryption helps SEV-enabled VM to automatically encrypt and decrypt their memory. In AMD system on chip, besides CPU, there's another processor called the secure processor, which will manage some AES keys. And there is also a 128-bit AES encryption engine, which is in charge of encryption and decryption on the fly. So data are unencrypted inside the CPU, and when guest VM tries to write data to memory, data will be automatically encrypted. Similarly, when guest VMs read data from memory to cache, data will be automatically decrypted by the AES engine. Then I will talk about the AES algorithm used by SEV. So because the memory is assessed randomly, memory is independently encrypted per aligned 128-bit block. And to avoid malicious hypervisor inferring the plain text where the same ciphertext SEV use exclusive or encrypts exclusive or modes, the XEX mode, to do the encryption. And the additional physical address based tweak function TX is used here. So when the AES engine encrypts the data, the data will first be exclusive or with the tweak function before the encryption. And after the encryption, it will be exclusive or with the tweak function again. So since SEV first released in 2016, there are some extensions of SEV. The second generation of SEV is called the SEV Encrypted State, SEVES. SEVES aims at protecting registered states in VM control block, VMCB. In SEV, when there is a word switch from the guest VM's word to host's word where VM access, the registered states are saved unencrypted in VMCB. Then in SEVES, the registered states are now saved encrypted in an area called the VMC area, the VMSA. The hardware also restricts the hypervisor's write access to VMSA during VM access. The third generation of SEV is called SEV Secure Nested Paging, SEV SMP, which is released recently. SEV SMP aims at protecting nested page table and preventing ciphertext modification. SEV SMP uses a structure called the reverse map table, the RMP table, to maintain the information about the address translation as well as the ownership of memory pages, which helps prevent NPT modification and also restricts hypervisors' write access to VM's memory pages. All existing attacks can be mitigated by SEV SMP. So that's all about the background. Then let's talk about our paper. This is the outline. I will begin with an unexplored side channel, what we call it ciphertext side channel. And then I will talk about what ciphertext side channel can do. I will also show two end-to-end -end attacks, followed by some discussion and then the conclusion. Okay, the ciphertext side channel. The ciphertext side channel targets at continuous monitoring ciphertext inside the VM assay. So when there is a VM access, register states are encrypted and stored in VM assay. Those register states are also encrypted per 60-byte block. Usually register stores an 8-byte value, and thus each 60-byte block may contain two registers value. 
However, some 60-byte block may contain only one register value like the ISP, RAX, CR2 in the figure. The rest eight bytes are reserved. For VMSA, the adversary doesn't have write access but have read access. This is also the fundamental of ciphertext side channel. By forcing VM access and record the ciphertext inside the VMSA, the adversary can collect a sequence of ciphertext during the VM's execution. That's the ciphertext side channel. Then the question is, what can the adversary get from those ciphertext data? With the help of those ciphertext, the adversary can first infer VM's execution state. So by continuous monitoring the ciphertext change, the adversary can infer VM's different activities. For example, when the block containing CR3 and the CR0 changes, the adversary can learn there is a context switch. And since CR0 barely changes, the ciphertext of this block can also use the as ID of different processes. The adversary can also learn an IP at once, the IX changes, and so on. By combining those very interesting information with controlled channel and nested page 40 information, the adversary can identify execution state for a known binary. The adversary can also use the ciphertext side channel to recover some registers plain text. And this will make the ciphertext side channel become more powerful if the adversary can build a ciphertext and plain text dictionary. So one way to collect that dictionary is where non-automatic VM access, the NAE event. The NAE events are those events that need to involve exposing some register's state to the hypervisor. For example, the CPU ID emulation. When there is a CPU ID instruction, a VMM communication exception, the VC exception is generated by hardware. And the VC handler inside the guest VM is going to handle it. The VC handler will copy necessary register state to an unencrypted area called guest host communication block, the GHCB. And then the VC handler triggers a VM access. The hypervisor needs to emulate the CPU ID instruction. And at this time point, the adversary can learn the plain text of IAX and RCX from GHCB. For the sequential VM run, the VM will resume from VC handler. The adversary can learn the corresponding ciphertext when the guest VM enters the VC handler or access the VC handler. In this way, the adversary can build a ciphertext and plain text dictionary. For IAX, the adversary can collect all ciphertext and plain text pair when the plain text runs from 0 to 127 by those NAE events during the boot period. OK, after you introduce the attack primitives, I will show two end-to-end -end attacks. The first attack is about stealing RSA priority key from SEV enabled VM. Here we target at the list open SSL library. Specifically, we target at a function called the big number get bits five inside the function BN modulus exponent constant time. So the BN get bits five will get five bits from the period key each time. It will put the result in IX and then return. The adversary targets at the ciphertext of IX and use the following steps to steal the priority key. So the adversary first use execution state inference master we introduced before to locate the guest physical address of two key functions. Function one is big number get bits five, and the function two is big number power five. The adversary then onsets the present bit of function one and the function two, like onset the function two's present bit when intercept the function one's nasty page fours. So because of the while loop, the adversary can see total 410 iterations of nested page faults of both function one and function two for 2048 bit RSA priority key. The adversary can then get the IX ciphertext when intercept the function two's nested page faults, which is also the time point when BN get bits five finish execution and is going to return. Each time the ciphertext represents five bits of the priority key. The adversary then compare the ciphertext with the dictionary and recover the plain text of the five bit period key each run. So after the total 410 runs, the adversary can collect the entire period key with 100% accuracy. 
Okay, then a quick example about breaking ECDSA. So it's quite similar. This time the adversary tries to steal the nonce K in ECDSA and the targets at a function called big number is bit set, which will return one if certain bit is set and return zero if it's unset. The adversary follows a similar steps. First, they determine the guess the physical address of the two key functions and then unset the present bit and get the IX ciphertext at the right time point. In this case, since the IX stores either zero or one, the adversary can directly infer the nonce K with only one bit entropy. It can also look up where the dictionary, and in this example, the adversary can also recover the plain text of nonce K with 100% accuracy. Okay, that's two end-to-end -end attacks, a quick discussion. So in our CypherLix attacks, we collect the ciphertext side channel in page level, which means we only collect the ciphertext when there is a page fault. The adversary can also use APIC interrupt to get instruction level ciphertext side channel, which can infer the execution states inside the same instruction page. I also want to discuss the hardware fix. There are two potential hardware fixes. One is to restrict software level read access to VM's memory as well as the VMSA with the help of the RMT table. The, the other hardware fix is to add randomization when stored the registers in VMSA. According to our discussion with AMD team, there might be a hardware patch soon in the future. Okay, finally, the conclusion. So it is the first explosion of a novel ciphertax side channel on AMD processors. And then we present the cypherlix attacks and show two end-to-end -end attacks against the constant time ISA and the ECDSA implementation with 100% accuracy. It's also the first known attack against SEV SMP and AMD will announce a security bulletin and assign a CVE for cypherlix. We also discuss some hardware countermeasures. Okay, that's all. Any questions? You can also reach me or my advisor with our email address. Thank you all for listening.